Mother Nature is not waiting. The past decade was the hottest on record. Global temperature has already risen 1.2 degrees Celsius, racing towards the threshold of catastrophe. Meanwhile, we see ever-rising sea levels, scorching temperatures, devastating tropical cyclones and epic wildfires. We need a green planet, but the world is on red alert. We are at the verge of the abyss. We must make sure the next step is in the right direction. Regardless of where we are on this planet, everyone is experiencing the effects of rising temperatures. Earth is getting warmer. Crop growth and food sources are adversely affected. Seawater level is rising. Unsustainable energy production leading to harmful emission and fossil fuel depletion. Will we have clean air to breathe and portable water to drink? Will we run out of inhabitable space on the planet? The concept of sustainable development is about being responsible to our children and their children. Will they be able to enjoy this level of clean air and water that we now have? Part of that responsibility is about how we live and interact with each other. So where do we begin so that as individuals, communities, and nations, we can have a common goal to work towards? This is where blueprints for sustainable development come in. The United Nations developed the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and it has been adopted by all UN member states in 2015. 17 SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals form the crux of this blueprint. It covers issues such as poverty, food security, mental health, and education. What is sustainable development, and why is there a need to define it? As the saying goes, to improve it, you need to measure it. To measure it, you need to define it. The most widely accepted definition is in the 1987 Brundtland Report as this. Development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. In other words, in satisfying our own needs, we should not compromise the prospect of the future generations in doing the same. Little acts like cycling to work go a long way to do our part for sustainable development. But how do we measure whether our actions will indeed improve the current situation? A more specific definition and assessment metric is needed to help us articulate if something is sustainable. Based on such an assessment, we may then practically work on improving the sustainability of a given subject. While there are many metrics to measure sustainability, there is a general consensus on the validity of the triple bottom lines or the three pillars of sustainable development. Let us take a look at the three pillars. They are the environmental, economic, and social pillars. Sustainable development must be supported by the three pillars. When a subject is not supported by one or more of the three pillars, it is deemed not sustainable or not supporting sustainable development. The overlapping areas of any two pillars cover the interpillar sustainability considerations. They are namely the socio-environmental, socio-economic, and eco-efficiency areas. Eco-efficiency may also be termed as eco-economic or environmental economic. This framework can be applied to evaluate and advance the sustainability of systems of various types and levels, for instance products, processes, organizations, nations, and the earth. As you can see, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or the UN SDG, 
cover all three pillars of sustainability, including pure economic and social goals apart from the environmental-related ones. To appreciate the key areas of concern, both globally and locally, do check out the UN SDG website to look at the latest development. Look closely at the finer details of each goal and the respective indicators, especially those that are relevant to your interest and profession. You are likely to see the direct and indirect impact of your work on sustainable development. Apart from the UN SDG, there are other sets of indicators developed for a variety of purposes related to sustainable development. We are a very small island nation. For water, there's no substitute. We thought about this issue way back in the 1970s, soon after independence, when we formed the Water Planning Unit under the Prime Minister's office. And there we thought about this issue of how do we have a master plan that can go down the generations, 50, 100 years. First, the water must be wholesome to drink, the minerals must be there, that comes from reservoir, green water. Second, the quantity must be enough, and that's where the recycling comes in. And thirdly, we must be drought resilient against climate change and so on. And that's where seawater desalting comes in. So all three working together will produce a sustainable solution for us, water supply system, down the decades. NEA constantly reaches out to the people and the community to encourage environmental ownership and stewardship. Creating public awareness on environmental challenges and issues in Singapore is vital in order to get uh, the buy-in of the public for many of our programs. The collective efforts of our partners and the community are key to Singapore's sustainability journey. It is imperative for all of us to work towards becoming a zero-waste nation where waste generation is minimized and waste materials are reused and recycled to give them a new lease of life. This will extend the lifespan of Sumatra Landfill and will contribute greatly to Singapore's sustainability journey. The first thing that we can do to help the fight against climate change is to reduce our carbon emissions. And carbon emissions come from many different sources, buildings, transportation, even our daily consumption. Everyone has to do their part to become more energy efficient and uh, perhaps to take uh, public transport once in a while or perhaps make that their habit. Uh, these simple actions that everyone can take will help greatly to bring about uh, reducing our carbon emissions over time and that will help us to become a more sustainable nation. We sell mobile phones, small electronic devices, and unfortunately, that piles up the electronic waste. So we feel we should be responsible to provide means and ways to make sure that waste is disposed. Sustainability is not something that we should start doing when we're 30, 40, 50 years old. Quite the opposite. I think sustainability should be in our DNA from a very, very young age. If it's part of our DNA as we're growing up, as a way of life, we have a better chance of making sure the planet and the environment um, are more sound in, in the years to come. So every one of us have a role to play. It is only when every moving part in this whole equation, the public, private and people sector work together, that we can actually have a sustainable Singapore. It is not impossible. It's a matter of how we change our behaviour and our lifestyle, but we need everyone in the equation to play that part. This is a quick checklist of the kind of things you can do for sustainable development. See how you fare in this list. And see if you identify the different areas of sustainable development in this list. Let us start by making a personal pledge of our own. Choose one of these daily actions and pledge to actively do your part for the sustainable development of Singapore and planet Earth. <laughs>